So, um, and as I said, there's a number of tools uh, that help you solve the problem. One of the most exciting one, and the one that kind of ties up with what I talk about, our vision of the world as being full of functions rather than technology, is called function-oriented search. Function-oriented search is very simple. I think people started, my good friend Chet, Henry Chetford started talking about open innovation what, five, seven years ago. My bigger friend, Simon Litwin, started talking about function-oriented search 20 years ago. Function-oriented search basically tells you, I want to find solutions that already exist and use them, apply them to my area. Hey, but I'm not talking about solutions that my competitors have. I want to find solutions that nobody ever heard about. Why? Because if I apply them, I will be ahead of the game. How do I find a solution that will work for me? I will find the ones that perform the same function as I need. <coughs> so I bring Tao's ideas into baking industry. Nobody ever thought about that. And I will do that. And how I can do that? Because I will look at what I need to do on a functional level. I will generalize that. And I look around the world. Suddenly the big world looks much smaller. Look at this uh, problem. This is a real problem. I, by the way, know about baby pool more than I want to know. <laughs> uh, we work with uh, Proctor Gamble. Uh, uh, they came to us and said, look, uh, we need to improve produ uh, productivity of our diapers life. Making diapers is amazing. A uh, typical diaper has 17 to 19 components, and they were making 600 diapers a minute. And the end of this minute, they will look at metal objects inside. It's amazing, but nothing is good for managers. This is what people who work for me always tell me. And so the management said, you guys should go up to 900 uh, diapers a minute. And everything would be good except one operation. When you look at a diaper, what's the main function of a diaper? Prevent certain liquid from leaking out, right? The problem with that, that uh, if you don't let air get in, you have baby rush. Because it turned out when this yucky liquid mixed with baby skin creates baby rush. So if you look at the back of a diaper called uh, back shit, uh, it perforated. There are small, tiny holes that will allow air to get into, wouldn't allow liquid to get out. So, for 600 diapers a minute, they were stamping technology. They're working well. On back sheet will go, they will stop. For 900 diapers a minute, wouldn't it work? We'll start dragging and so on. What's a typical solution? Add another machine. Add another machine. Very good. Man, very good. It's exactly what I want to do. The problem is, and nobody said that life is fair, another machine costs as much as the first one. And you have to reduce cost rather than increase one. Right? Yeah, you can try to improve stamping technology, spend a couple of years on research. It might solve this problem. We said, let's look. Yeah, go ahead. Maybe reduce the number of compartments. That don't function well. Yeah, trim. Trim back sheet or trim a bag. <laughs> uh, no, but you're right. You're right. Uh, what we said, wh what are we talking about? We're talking about, and the proper people say, oh, we're talking about perforating this specific film, and this is kind of a formulated, so there's no baby could touch it, mother can touch it, blah, blah, blah. We said, no, no. We are talking to making intent in a solid material. It's a different function, right? I'm not talking about perforating the bad shit. And we started looking at the areas where it's absolutely critical for people to perform this function. And this is one of the most important things of function-oriented service. You have to look at the area, we call them leading areas, 
but it's absolutely critical to do it. Why? Because it's a critical for people to perform this function. They will learn how to do it right. And they will learn how to do it wrong. So you could grab, steal, and nobody listens to me, I said steal. In a civilized way, I said adapt. You can adapt this solution to your problem without paying all these millions and millions of dollars for research. So we looked at that and we found the technology in the Russian space program for crying out loud. Remember baby pool, this is what we're talking about. They had a very interesting technology that called it spaceship uh, testing gun. Uh, what happened was when the you know, ship goes in outer space, there is a bunch of micrometeorites that attack it. So if you want to know that uh, astronauts or cosmonauts will survive, you want to make sure that it's tested, right? So they created a gun that uh, on testing facilities will send tiny particles in predetermined pattern. And then they will look at that and say, hey, which one penetrated, what percentage penetrated and so on. Sounds familiar, right? This is what we need to do. We need to have a predetermined pattern, penetrate the skin, which is a thin film is, right? In a, uh, in a very productive way. So we took this technology and adapted to the baby pool. The funniest part of this story, the punchline, comes as as follows. <coughs> when we work with uh, people outside our company, we call them experts, and we have a network of uh, eight to 10,000 uh, experts, uh, we never tell them about the problem that we work on, or, you know, company and so on. So. We never told this guy what his technology was used for. Three years later, he joined our company and learned about that. He wanted to commit suicide because he was one of the most respected scientists in the world working on space program. It turned out that his uh, invention was applied to baby.